Greetings and salutations, friends. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Alexander James here from Monster Kong Marketing and also from the YouTube channel Alexander James Jansen, which you're watching this video on. Today, I want to speak about why living in Eastern Europe is so awesome, right? I have been living on and off in Eastern Europe for the last, I want to say, 12 years, right? And I don't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go back. I ain't going back. I ain't going back, you know. I ain't going back. I'm not going back west. I'm not going back west. I take little times where I dip in and out of um, the west, <laughs> let's say. And even to say that, some people are going to be like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about east-west? Eastern Europe is fucking amazing, right? It is absolutely amazing. I've been living in Poland for a very long time. Also been different places in Eastern Europe as well and expanding my reach in relation to that as well. Pretty soon heading to um, so Western Ukraine um, and also towards Russia at a later stage, right, in the year hopefully, uh, all going to plan. And other than that, you know, hit up, you know, like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia. Think of it as strategic for you now if you have an online business if and not only right but if you have an online business it's very very easy right so you can transition boom from a to b to c and you got to be smart about it what do i mean by that well for the last while you know i've been living in poland doing all of that stuff but recently i've been thinking more about you know setting up companies here doing a couple of things in relation to that you got to think about your taxes. You got to think about, and I know people will say, crypto, go crypto, right? Go that way. Yes, I agree. I'm not telling you what to do or what not to do. Um, do everything you can to avoid it, right? I'm not telling you don't pay taxes. I'm just saying, to be honest, there are loopholes for certain things, right? Legal loopholes that you can take advantage of. And um, in order to do that, you should be smart about your wealth, where you put it, how you do it. I've been living the hotel life for a good while, right? So a good amount of time where I just bounce in and out of hotels. It's very convenient for me because I have, um, like I said, the online business and, and I can eat there and I can chill and I can do a whole bunch of stuff like that. But there is also another side to it. If you plan on living in Eastern Europe longer, right? You should base yourself. Get something, maybe buy land, maybe rent land, something like that. Maybe take advantage of the actual place that you're in. Uh, within the law, right? Take advantage of, hey, should I put down roots here? No. Some people might have a family already. They might be married to, an, you, you know, you might be married to an Estonian girl or a Lithuanian girl or a Latvian girl or whatever, or vice versa, right? Um, the woman might have a husband or whatever way you want to look at that, right? But it also has to do with thinking about putting down roots. Now, you might be doing that long term. Can you benefit um, majorly if you if you are married to someone like that? Yeah, for sure, because you could end up getting a second passport. That is nice. Um, although certain countries won't allow um, dual citizenship or three. Let's say if you already have two, you might not be able to get the third one. So that um, that is an issue as well. For example, let's say if I was married to a Polish woman over time, if I spoke uh, Polish fluently, which I do quite well, but if I took the tests and stuff like that, I could get a Polish passport most likely, but I would have to give up the other the other ones, right? So my Irish one or my Dutch one, I'd be able to keep one and have a second one. Are there loopholes to it? Yeah, a little bit. Um, am I going to tell you what they are? No, go figure it out for yourself. Um, in being able to hold more passports and things like that. But living in Eastern Europe is amazing, right? Number one, weather, in my opinion. Um, I could say, coming from Ireland, rain, 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 right, and all of that stuff. But the other side of it is, when you are in Eastern Europe, you generally, generally have good, sunny weather, right, for most of the year. And then you have solid, freezing, freezing weather. But you still have blue skies, right? Whereas Ireland is quite grey and can be quite depressing. The UK probably the same thing with with that. Um, what I would say there is like, again, it depends on what you're looking for, what you want, what your budget is, right? Because you might be someone who has to actually have a physical job working nine to five in a specific place. To be honest, I don't know much about that. 
I don't know much about that in Eastern Europe, as in working a specific job. I only know being an online digital nomad slash entrepreneur. And what from that perspective, it's very, very valuable to be living in Eastern Europe. Um, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia. Some people might say, you know, um, Russia, Ukraine, all of that stuff. Again, it it's preference, right? Where do you want to be in Prague? Do you want to be in, in Budapest? Do you want to be and strategic locations? What's the reason for you wanting to be there, right? So there's a lot of different reasons why living in Eastern Europe is so fantastic. And like I would say for me, right, some of the benefits, Poland, for example, awesome food, amazing people, um, beautiful women, great country, like just beautiful people in general, right? Kocham Polska. I, you know, też mogę rozmawiać po polsku. I can speak Polish, right? But all of these things, I haven't delved into different language. I, languages I have in relation to Ukrainian a little bit because I've got some friends and I was planning to just go there before, um, you know, some of the stuff happened. I'm not going to go into that in this video because, you know, um, let's say monetization purposes and things like that. But um, what I mean by that is, you know, you can be flagged, the video can be flagged, etc. What was I going to say? Food, right? People, mentality, right? Um, family orientated, very family orientated, very, a lot of people do like to chill out on the weekend. It's not my thing. It's not my thing. I like watching it, but I like grinding and doing different stuff like that. So in my, in my, in my opinion, people who are chilling all weekend are weekend, right? <laughs> That's why the English word for weekend actually technically, uh, means to be weakened, right? To be weak from the week so that you're um, to be weak from the week so that you're weakened by the weekend. <laughs> so you can earn a living. Do you know what earn means? Earn. Earn is a pot that they put dead people in, right? They cremate them and they put them in an urn. So you're earning a living all week. So you're weakened by the weekend. Anyway, we're not going into that in this video. We're not going into that in this video. Although there will be different videos where I speak about that. Living in Eastern Europe is fantastic. The food is amazing. The people are amazing. The places, the architecture, in my opinion, right? The architecture and just the open-mindedness, right? The open-mindedness. If you're willing enough, and this is any country, if you learn the language and you integrate, which you should, don't walk around speaking English for, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna do my accents. Excuse me. Where is this? Where is that? That's fine for a period of time, right? All right, mate, do you know where the shop is? That's fine for a period of time. But you got to get into learning the language. Learn it. Study it. If you need to go to school, go to school. Integrate. And don't allow yourself to speak English, right? For a period of time. Unless, you're, unless you can't speak a word of the language, um, that's fine starting out. But then integrate. So living in Eastern Europe is fantastic. The people are amazing. Um, and and basically, you know, that's pretty much it. So that's kind of like a rant about living in Eastern Europe. Um, again, people are awesome. Food is awesome. Wages and things like that. Yes, you will run into issues if you're, um, what would I say? If you're not doing the online stuff, it's a little harder. Is it impossible? No, there are very good opportunities to be had also in real estate, also in setting up companies, building companies, maintaining companies. Another thing I'm going to mention is the talent in Eastern Europe is absolutely phenomenal, right? And you might say, talent, you mean the looking, you know, talent out there, like, you know, beauty, yes, that, the talent, but also um, the actual talent for people who've gone to st school, studied have you know phenomenal degrees in coding and business and all these different things and they're really really good right so you can actually build companies out of poland um build companies in eastern europe and do that and actually hire the people and the staff from there right now if you don't want to go down that route there are different routes as well one of the routes would be to um hire them as freelancers right so you're still paying in their currency so whether that's in polish latte or whether that's in you know what they pay in the ukraine i don't actually know what um what currency they use there but basically what i would say in relation to that is like 
yeah, freelancers as well can really, really help. Uh, what else? You could hire a team leader in that language. Um, again, you want to know your business inside out, upside down, back to front if you're doing that. But you want to be building teams and building your network. Is there anything else I could give you in relation to, you know, Eastern Europe? What I would say is that um, building up a network before you go to a country, and that's any country, is very, very important. Like I said, integrating um, and building that network and becoming friends with people and meeting people and interacting with them personally not just online right because yeah you can be an online digital nomad and that's fine that's fantastic but you're missing one part of it which is that in um like i said eastern europe very family orientated very very important um also they pride themselves on you know physically meeting right so actually getting to know one another you come to the barbecue you're you know you're chilling all of that stuff and you're actually integrating right having a couple of vodkas you're having some some peebles you know you're, you're having a barbecue things like that again that's going to be all over eastern europe because a lot of it is the same mentality not everything but a lot of it is the same mentality so the question is to recap should you live in eastern europe in my opinion it's phenomenal it's so beautiful uh, infrastructure is great in most places um, and yeah you know like family orientation or um, you know what did I say <laughs> lost my train of thought um, the family mentality right and the niceness and the kindness and overall just the beauty right for me it's also like the countryside driving through Poland, driving through, um, let's say, Hungary, dri driving through any of these countries. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful countryside. Do they all look the same? No, but similar? Yes. Similar mentality? In some way, yes. Uh, does that have to do with the transition out of um, when it was Russia and stuff like that? Uh, people will say, don't call it Russia. I never do, right? But I'm saying when it was that kind of occupied by, let's say, um, Russian people and stuff like that, or the Russian Federation, whatever you want to call it. There are some things that, that remain, right? Some, not many, uh, which is a good thing, in my opinion. Um, but some, some of the things are nice and some of the things are not, right? And, and so that's debatable, again, entirely up to yourself to um, draw your own conclusion from that. But again, you know, what would I say about living in Eastern Europe? Fantastic. Phenomenal weather, phenomenal people, phenomenal food, great opportunities, you know, um, real estate will be another one. If you can get into real estate, try. Um, set up, be clever. Maybe it's like a tiny home you set up. Land, land particularly in Poland, is, is not so hard to buy as, as someone from outside. Um, farmland is a completely different story. You know, you, you, you have to be a farmer. Are there ways around that and to become a farmer? Yes. Um, would I say you should do that? My opinion, after being here for many years, no, you shouldn't. Unless you're going to contribute agriculturally to the country right so don't be a fucking dick and come in and try and like get a farmer's license and buy a whole bunch of land and fuck off right that's not that's not what that's for and i'm very passionate about that <laughs> um don't go do that don't be that person right if you're gonna do it and you want to get a farm license and you can and you're able to do that if you can do it contribute to the country right live here let's say if it's in poland live in poland contribute be somebody who gives back and not somebody who takes right and don't don't just come in get something and then fuck off out of a country right you shouldn't do that you should do that in no country you should be looking to um like anything in life you should be looking to contribute what can i give right not what can i take 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 no what can i give what can i give what can i give go out meet people talk to people be kind um network build your network in all of eastern europe so you can bounce from a to b to c and create that because you never know when you're going to need that right you never know when you're going to need that for me uh poland in particularly is in my heart um i've lived here for many many years on and off i love the country you know i love the language i love the people and eastern europe in general for me fantastic you could say yeah i'm going to go to spain i'm going to build this i'm going to do that yeah there's one thing if there's only one thing that I could say negative in general in Eastern Europe, not everywhere, air quality in the winter time can be um, a little bit problematic. 
so they're working in many places towards getting that better but there are some days like to, let's say if you're in poland and there's heavy smog and stuff like that it's not so great right now is that all the time no would it be this year maybe because of you know inflation different things like that you you can't always predict that right people are going to be burning more different things which you know can have an effect on the the atmosphere or the air you breathe and things so one way to avoid that in poland head up north right so along the baltic sea where you've got the sea breeze coming in generally the air is more clearer in the winter time now there are different days in the in in country where it's um, going to be better as well and then the south as well if you're in the mountains some people will say yeah if you're in somewhere like zakopana in the south of poland you're going to you know they'll be saying that it's really bad air and stuff like that yes but if you're higher up because i was last year if you're higher up um in the mountains and you have a breeze you're not going to feel that as much right so that's just some tips for you in relation to that what else and what i would say is have a car like anywhere have a car um if you can get it insured in poland right um are there ways around that generally you need to have an address right so you need to have an address um in eastern europe if you're living in a different country i would say try and attain a license there as well try and try and get yourself set up to the level that you can have a base there build that use it as a base you can still live in different parts of the world but have a base there and maybe rent out um the location that you're staying in when you're not there right so to create a passive income so what else could i give you uh what else what else really that's pretty much it there's probably a lot of stuff i haven't touched on this in relation to eastern europe but so you know ukraine um russia estonia latvia lithuania poland um all good places hungry you know and you can go you can go different you can go to like you could say like the Bal balkans or whatever like i mean you know bosnia different places like that i haven't actually traveled down there yet i haven't seen like bosnia i've been to croatia i haven't seen yugoslavia you know um bulgaria which which i'd like to visit romania is one where my friend is actually going to base himself out of as well so it really depends is eastern europe the place for you well is living in Eastern Europe good? Well, all of these things depend on you. You might be a home bird and say that Ireland is my country. You might say, I'm never leaving the Netherlands. You might say, I'm never leaving Germany. But why not venture out? Churches, architecture, like I said, beautiful people, beautiful places, beautiful things. Living in Eastern Europe is fantastic. That is my video on Eastern Europe and um, Hope you're having a fantastic day. Greetings and salutations. Peace, love and light. Chat soon.